how are we gonna edit the Fuji film pictures now that Capture One is gone? As of January 31st, Capture One Express for Fuji films only, it's all gonna be gone. So uh, we won't be able to use any free editors from Capture One or Phase One, the company. They have been making amazing photo editing softwares and I have been using Capture One since like version 10 and it has worked fantastic. In my heart, I gotta be honest, I am a little sad to lose this amazing software, but that leaves me with a big question. What am I gonna do now? How are we gonna edit Fujifilm images for free? Since they made the announcement in December, I have been preparing myself for this big change because as a photographer, um, freelancer, I'm literally working for free. So all my jobs that I do for pictures and videos are all free and I just basically get paid in cookies or cake, whatever monetary re reimbursement that YouTube sends me for the ads. That's pretty much it. Everything else is just out of my pocket. And yeah, that's one of the reasons why I can't afford big professional software such as DaVinci Studio Pro or uh, Capture One Pro. But we're gonna try to make the best of it. As you all know, here, JPR Tech in this channel, we all, this is what we're all about, trying to make the best use of the tech we have for cheap or better yet, free. And today, I'm gonna talk about three good alternatives that we have what I use for free and also give you my thoughts on it and as a disclaimer I'm a Mac user so the software that I'm gonna be recommending and talking about one of them is only Mac related and I'm sure you'll find the Windows equivalent but let's just start with that Mac software first and that is photos I know the built-in photo editor that comes with all your Mac with your brand new Mac that good old app still works just fine. Now I did notice that it doesn't clean up the shadows and the low light as well as Capture One. Capture One is just amazing. I, I mean, okay, I'm going back to Capture One. I know, I know it's distracting, but it, I, I just gotta say it because it's just really, Capture One just squeezes the quality out of the XH1 that I have right here. Man, the high dynamic range I can get uh, using that software. But anyway, going back to photos, photo does a decent job with editing colors and sharpness and all that, but the high dynamic range does suffer quite a bit compared to what I can squeeze out using the Capture One software. Now with that said, it does work great. You know, we still have edit, we can edit by colors. We can, we have the curves that we can play with the levels as well. And they're individually color as well. So don't sleep on photos app. It's still good enough to get all the basic editing done. We just don't have the luxury to use mask or uh, layering. But other than that, it's not that bad. We can even do some touch up to remove or soften some spots, whether it's dust spots or maybe a pimple on the skin. So it's quite a good editor. And that's why it's on the top of my list because it comes with your Mac, it's free, and it does a decent job. And it also at the same time on top of that, it works as a library for your photos. You can organize them by groups, by albums, even upload them directly to uh, the iCloud or if you have a uh, photo stream album, even works with that. And another thing great about the Photos app is how smooth it is because it is, of course, support, it's a supported app. It's a native app to the Mac OS system. It works like butter. It's really smooth, very responsive. Any of the M1s that I have used, such as my M1 Mac Mini and my M1 MacBook Pro. So that is why it's on top of the list. But up next, if you're not a Mac user, you're a Windows, a Linux user, check out the following recommendations that might be good. You probably already heard of them, but I'm gonna share them with you anyway because those work well with Fujifilm. So the second app that I'm gonna recommend is Darktable. Now, Linux users are very familiar with this software because, yeah, coming from Linux, that was one of the go-to software to work with the Sony RAW files as well as the Fujifilm RAW files. And it works great. Again, it's not on par with 
capture one it's just i don't know what cap see i keep going back to capture one i don't know what they did i mean they're working with fujifilm fujifilm shared something that they could clean the shadows the colors everything is just so nice okay but going back to dark table it's not as clean you know again we're dealing with the same limitations as photos i've had and that is dealing with the colors um heavy color editing or when you have a low light situation the grain a high dynamic range situation it's really hard to bring the highlights that look clipped but are really not that clipped because capture one can bring back a lot of that data but dark table also has a hard time with that and has a hard time cleaning the colors in the dark noisy shadow areas again i'm being really strict here because i'm coming from a really really high standard of capture one but dark table does a great job and the cool thing about dark table something that the photos app doesn't have film simulations they got them all the astia provia classic chrome and of course the monochrome all the favorites are all there so if you're editing your raw files you could convert them to look similar to the good old native fujifilms film simulations now the problem with dark table is one of the cons again it's not a native mac os well it is but i don't know why i feel it's really buggy it's a little bit draggy and slow feels sluggish when you do heavy edits on it and the worst part about the app is just the fonts it just looks ugly and it's really hard to read yeah that's why it's in second place and last but not least my last recommendation is gimp if you've been around photo editing you probably heard of gimp and probably thought about it as, a, as an alternative but a, a gimp is just such a powerful editor that it's just a little bit too much for the edits that i do but it's there as an option but i did notice that it doesn't work with fujifilm raw now if anyone out there can guide me in how we can edit raw fujifilm files in gimp i will be ever so grateful yeah so now it's just jpegs and but you it's still gimp is such a good powerful editor we can squeeze a lot of quality especially using layers and masking we can get some really nice decent edits in game so that's why i wanted to bring it up in the list but again we can edit the raw files so it, i'm not relying on that software as uh for my in my workflow and that's all i got for now guys so it's been a couple of months this is the workflow i've been using is basically importing everything into iphoto and just edit there and even in iPhoto, you could switch over to the RAW, use the RAW as original, edit the RAWs there in photos, or even use an external editor, which is pretty neat. And it will save that file back into photos later if you export it. So that's why for me, that is the workflow that I'm gonna be using from now on until someone tells me a better way to edit Fujifilm RAW files. I really want to get the most out of this Fujifilm X-H1, which I love very much. It's just an amazing stills camera and video camera as well. With that said, that's it for me right now. I'm going to keep working on these JPEGs and these RAWs uh, using some softwares and we'll see what we find. And also guys, please, if you got any recommendations, remember, keep in mind, I don't want to be tied up into a subscription and anything over like 400 dollars is just out of the questions i am in a budget but i am free for alternatives so please uh, let me know in the comment section down below what you guys are using to edit your fujifilm raw images and of course we're not gonna forget the canon eos m which is actually recording me right now 14 bits in the 4.4k the 2 by 1 aspect ratio which works really well with the fujifilm's dci very close um, aspect ratio but anyway 14 bits 4.4k and if you guys are curious about my whole shooting setup it's pretty neat this thing is so tiny i mean people have talked about um different youtube setups that are in like one pole or one stand something like that but this takes it to a whole new level let me show you what i'm working with here let me just show you what i got right here all right so it's one of these things right here you know that we just have this on a 
circular really this is designed for just a microphone but check it out i got a little clamp right here that's holding my ulazi light beam i don't know what that is called but we also got a bow head uh, mount a newer bow head right there holding my canon usm with the sigma f1.4 amazon tablet which is my monitor it's still recording and that is it so this thing is super portable check it out i can just pick this up and be on the go oh yeah and by the way the microphone is cheapo audio technica a lav mic costs like 30 dollars and uh yeah this is the whole setup we can walk around and we got the constant light so no matter where i go check this out i'm gonna take my lunch plate me and my lightsaber light it's dark kitchen area dining area it's so dark all the lights are off but i got constant light nice. and then we just sit right here on my desk put the camera down set it down and we're back into our youtube studio pretty cool